Rising for Justice's expungement program is so important and necessary because there is never a shortage of people who need this assistance. So many low-income DC residents that are being impacted by their criminal records after the day their sentence is over, it's still impacting them every single day. The majority of the motions that we filed are called interest of justice motions to seal. And it is what it sounds like, that it's in the interest of justice to grant these motions. I grew up in DC. Um, I grew up um, uh, on Capitol Hill. I went to uh, Frank W. Ballou uh, Senior High School, ended up graduating from Ballou in 1985 and ended up going to Howard University, which was my first choice. A couple years on, when the money started to dry up, I ended up uh, enlisting in the in the army and going to Mogadishu, to Somalia. When I ended my time in service, and I decided I wasn't quite done with uh, my vow of poverty, and so I left there and went to do uh, uh, my PhD in social work at the University of Pittsburgh, and um, ended up at Wayne State University in Detroit um, as a social work professor there. I intended to stay there for quite some time, um, and um, I had to curtail that um, because I needed to come back home to D.C. and care for my parents. The home that I bought when I got back to D.C. was the home that I could afford. And I didn't have the best neighbor on one side of me. They had a penchant for parties and loud music. And, and that's fine, um, but the parties tended to go on till 2, 3 in the morning. I remember one day, um, I just couldn't take it. And so I called the police, and the police came and they had him turn it down, and then the police were gone 30 minutes later, music's back up again. I called the police again. The police were like, you know, you really need to, this has got to stop now. Um, not just turn it down, but like the party's over. And so I was planning to go to the gun range. I was gonna take my girlfriend to the gun range the next day, but because I'd had such little sleep, um, I knew that that was not going to happen. I knew that I was going to want to sleep in. And so I went to the trunk um, of my car to get the weapon out because I wanted to make sure I didn't run afoul of DC law. And it was in the course of, you know, retrieving the weapon from the trunk and bringing it back into my home that I, the intersection with my neighbors occurred. And they were yelling and um, I didn't know where things were going to go. So, but I didn't want to confront them either. So I grabbed both the case and the weapon and made a beeline. Uh, to my door, ran to to my home. The first thing I did was I called the police um, to let them know that I'd been accosted by my neighbors. I'm on the phone with the police and about four police cars pulled up and they weren't there for my call. They were there for a black man with a weapon. When the police came after the, the call about a weapons assault. I remember trying to explain to the police my version of the events. Um, but of course, it, they fell on deaf ears. And so they took me to jail. It was, it was, it was, de it was dehumanizing. It was, um, it was the most, it was the most degrading thing I've, I've ever experienced. I believe that speaking my truth was going to be exculpatory. That this was going to, this was going to work in my favor. I waited for that moment, but that moment never, never quite came. Um, I pled to um, misdemeanor attempted carrying a firearm without a license. My naivete, um, I thought that the misdemeanor was on on the record. Well, it was, but the arrest was assault with a deadly weapon, which of course is a felony. I work for the federal government and what I do is um, look at, investigate psychological factors that influence microeconomic decisions. I have a clearance and that clearance was due to be renewed. The interviewer told me that there was an ADW um, charge that's on my record, and I, I didn't know that. As a result, he had a lot of questions. And so after, you know, the recertification um, and how arduous it was, and now that I understood, you know, that, that something much more nefarious was on my record than just the misdemeanor, if I was gonna, you know, have an opportunity to move up or, or secure another job, that it was gonna be imperative that I, I had that uh, sealed. 
The biggest way that we're seeing this impact is in employment. So sometimes it means that people aren't able to get a job, period. In the course of a couple of years, I must have applied for well over 40 jobs and didn't get a call back from any of them. I realized that this was going to forever haunt me. And that's when I reached out to Rising for Justice. The first time I ever heard uh, of Dr. Murphy was in a voicemail that he left for um, us on our expungement line. And I called and did intake and was able to determine that he was eligible for a motion to seal his record and that not only was he eligible, but that he was just really deserving of the opportunity. Reaching out and speaking to Amanda and communicating with, with, with her was a life-changing moment for me. She was really the first kind ear that I think I had in this process. It was the one moment that I actually felt like I had an actual advocate for me. The case was placed with one of our pro bono attorneys that I was able to coach and mentor and work with throughout the process. And we worked together to make sure that it was the best motion that it could be and really captured how incredibly deserving that he was of having the court grant the motion, which after just a few short months, which is relatively quick for these processes, we heard back from the court and the motion was granted. And it was so incredibly rewarding because we knew how important it was and how impactful it would be for his future. I was ecstatic. I was just on cloud nine. I mean, I literally did cartwheels in my living room. I'm like, it felt like I had a chance to have my life back. I really wish that I could say that his story was surprising to me, um, but unfortunately, it wasn't out of the ordinary. There are so many John Murphys out there and we can't help them all, unfortunately, but with more financial support, we would have the resources that we need desperately to be able to help the people of our community. I reapplied and renewed my license, um, my social work license, and um, I'm presently gonna be seeking the, you know, the more advanced clinical license. I would not be able to do that, but not for Rising for Justice. My new house is, uh, is unattached, and so I don't have neighbors that are connected to me. We don't share a wall anymore. I feel very fortunate. My name is Amanda Torres, and I know that Rising for Justice changes lives. My name is John Murphy, and the people at Rising for Justice have saved my life.